skiing the powder. Let me give you a quick lesson on how uh, you can do better in the powder, how all the good things we learned in the other chapters relate to uh, what you need to do in the soft snow. There is no different technique uh, required. It all builds up on the skills that you have seen in these other chapters. Where are the problems that recreational skiers often have with the powder? And one of the main things that happens is that people get nervous about the fact that their skis are all covered in snow. In difference to a groomed run where I'm standing on a nice corduroy and I can just turn my skis being here in soft snow, I cannot just turn my feet and people have the feeling as if they're locked in and they find it hard to get the skis uh, into the fall line. Feeling stuck in the powder, skiers often use their whole body to force the skis into the turn and as a result often lose their balance. So being able to ski the powder comes down to basic skiing skills. In my new ski instructional, I will show you how you can improve your skills to be able to create a clean release in the turn initiation and how to be able to find a stronger platform in the second half of the turn. These skills will first be practiced on groomed runs and once improved will help you to progress in all other areas. In order to improve our performance in the powder, we therefore often need to make a step back to an easier environment where change can happen. Little mistakes that don't show on an easier groomed run will hold you back in the off-piste and therefore need to be changed first. The biggest secret about skiing the powder is that uh, happens in the pressure phase of the turn when we are using our whole body to push the snow underneath our skis together. And if I push snow together, what happens is that it changes from a fluffy consistency to something firm. If uh, kids, for example, make snowballs, they will never make snowballs that look like this. Kids know I push the snow together, I apply some pressure, and then I can actually get uh, something that will have an effect if it hits someone. Same with skiing the powder, I want to use my uh, weight to push the snow underneath uh, my skis together and if I do that then I will have a solid platform down there that I then can use to come up and forward for that I then can use to initiate the turn in exactly the same way as we have done it on the groomers. So exactly the same skill of building up pressure, balancing against something down there with the only difference that in the powder I need to do it a little softer, I need to adjust a little bit to the snow. So the feeling is key in skiing the powder and that changes with uh, how much snow there is and with the consistency of it. Have a look at these exercises here that will give you a good idea and help you improve the feeling of how you can actually push the snow together, how long it takes uh, until you find a solid platform and once you have that feeling that there's something underneath you that you can then step on, you will feel much more comfortable then to also link some turns. So look into these exercises first and then uh, we'll take you to the next step. The first exercise I want you to do is to traverse across a hill with a little bit of fresh snow on top and then just push first your left then your right leg down and see how far you're actually sinking in. How far you will sink in obviously depends a lot on what kind of skis you're on. The wider your ski is, the bigger that surface is, uh, the uh, less it'll take until you feel some resistance down there. If you're on skinny slalom skis, it'll take a little longer and it'll take a little more skill to find that pressure platform. So left, right, left, right, and try to feel where is the moment where I get some resistance. In the next step we push both legs down at the same time. When we can feel the platform, we come up and forward and let ourselves float to the top again. By doing this a little more dynamic, we will be able to get more out of the snow, try to get more release to get out of the snow as much as possible before you go down again. As we're coming up and forward, our tips will start to build up pressure first, 
resulting in a slight dolphin move, similar to what we have practiced in the short turn chapter. These exercises are all about getting a better feeling how much I can push the snow together when I feel a good platform I can then push off from. If we want to walk up on snow, we are doing the same thing. We don't just push our, our legs in, we try to very carefully uh, make one step after the other. We make our movements a little softer, we don't try to be hectic and run up there. If I'm walking on X, find out when do I have enough resistance to make that next step. And that's very similar when I'm doing my, my powder turns. I build up the pressure and then uh, use that uh, balance platform to then come into the next turn. I don't want to be too hectic, too wild. I want to make my movements as soft as the snow is. No movement, no pressure build up, no release. If I stay static in the same position and just try to do my turns by uh, turning my feet, I will find a lot of resistance down there and I will realize it's not working that well. Could do it quite okay on this one because there's not that much snow. If there's more snow and I try to, to turn my feet, then I will also need to use my, my body to force them around. Just think about it. I, force my body around in this direction there's a lot of unpleasant uh, strain on my knees and the ligaments in there if you have the feeling that powder skiing is hard on your knees then you're doing something wrong and you should join us for a little lesson super duper <laughs> Thank you.